This video is a demonstration of our Netflix earnings model. Please keep in mind that this video was created prior to the fiscal third quarter 2015 earnings release and these values will update as new information um, is disclosed by the company so please check our website for the latest updates. The structure of the model is consistent with our other companies. In the upper left hand corner we have our color legend which indicates anywhere you see a blue cell those are our estimates. Purple cells represent company guidance, and orange cells represent consensus estimates. You'll see that some of the columns are shaded in dark gray. Those represent historic periods. And then the light gray represent um, forecasts for future periods. You'll also notice that we have some comments embedded in certain cells and those are to highlight management's guidance for um, certain earnings items. So if you go to the company's investor relations page and click on the letter to shareholder from the last quarter, you'll see that they always forecast a number of items for the next fiscal quarter. And those are where the comments are coming from. So we start with the income statement, which we model on both a gap and non-gap basis. Below that we have segment details, and we have a balance sheet, cash flow statement, multiple valuation section, and a discounted cash flow valuation section. So scrolling back up to the income statement, the driver of these earnings are really is really in the segment details and you'll see that we disaggregate it based on domestic streaming, international streaming, and domestic DVDs, which is consistent with how management um, presents the details in their quarterly earnings filings. And then we also have some income statement ratios. So if we expand the domestic um, streaming details, you'll see how we uh, are able to generate the earnings numbers in the income statement. So it starts with the total paid domestic members at the end of the period. This purple cell is telling us that management guided total paid members to 42.51 million at the end of the September quarter. And that represents quarter over quarter growth rate of 3.5%. Then we calculate the average paid member in the period, uh, simply the average of the last two quarters. And to get the domestic streaming revenue, we have to calculate the streaming revenue per average paid member. And since management guided this um, total streaming revenue to 1.069 billion, we know that the domestic streaming revenue per average paid member must be 2560 per member. So you can see that this total revenue is simply the average paid members for the period times the domestic streaming revenue per average paid member. We do the same thing for international streaming, and we take a similar approach for the um, DVD rentals, and then we have our three items that make up the revenue line item. So if you scroll back up to the income statement, you can see that that's simply the sum of those three items in the segment details. Then we have our cost of revenues, and that represents the cost of revenues again for each one of the three segments. And that is based on our domestic streaming revenue gross margin, international streaming gross margin, and DVD gross margin estimates. From there we get to our operating expense line items, whoops, marketing, technology and development, and general and administrative to get to our total operating expenses. Again, each one of those is calculated based on the segment details down below. or at least the marketing is, technology and development and general administrative is based on a percentage of revenue. And that's down below in the segment details. So you'll see here technology and development costs to revenue and general administrative expenses to revenue. So that gets us to our operating income on a gap basis. And then we have some stock-based comp expenses, which are our non-gap adjustments. We model it based on a percentage of revenue for forward periods. 
to get to our operating income on a non-GAAP basis. And then we have interest expense and other expenses. Uh, interest expense is based on a percentage applied to our average debt balance and other income expense is based on percentage of revenue. Then we have some non-GAAP adjustments to net income to get to our total non-GAAP income and our diluted EPS on a non-GAAP basis. Below the segment details you'll see the balance sheet. Anywhere you see these blue cells those represent balances that we felt were um, too difficult to project out and so we're just setting it equal to what the ending balance of the pre previous quarter was. And then there are some ratios down below the balance sheet. Below that is the cash flow statement. And again, you'll see some blank cells in here because a number of those uh, balances are too difficult to project out. But the cash flow statement essentially is explaining the changes in the balance sheet line items. Below that are some ratios for the cash flow statement and then we get to our multiple valuation. The way we calculate our multiples is we take the ending close price per share uh, each day. We subtract from that the net cash or net debt per share and then we divide it by the consensus EPS estimate for the next 12 months. We take the three month average high and low and in this case we're using a valuation of 408 times the next 12 month consensus EPS estimates excluding cash which is just about the average price and if you click on the valuation cell you can see that it's just taking these four items added together which are EPS for the next four quarters at the bottom of our income statement and it's multiplying it by our multiple which is the average for over the last um, three months and then it's adding back the net cash per share. That's how it gets to the $107 target. Now for the discounted cash flow evaluation we first calculate what the weighted average cost of capital is and it's based on the required return on Netflix equity um, plus the uh, a percentage of the weighted average cost of debt and then it applies, it uses that discount factor for each one of the first five stages in our first stage uh, cash flow valuation and then it also takes a net present value of the terminal value and adds the two together and then adds back the net cash per share to come up with $108 per share. If you'd like additional details on our discounted cash flow approach please visit our YouTube channel for our video that describes it. And uh, now that we understand how the model works, you can scroll back up to the segment details and um, we'll show you how to make some, some adjustments. So let's collapse everything for now. And maybe you want to see what the impact on share valuation would be if the domestic streaming business uh, outperformed this quarter uh, well ahead of what management guided to. So management is basically guiding paid member growth to 3.5%. Let's see what it was in the past. Um, it's gotten up to 8% at, at one point, and obviously that's, that might not happen, but let's just see what, what, um, what would happen to shares if it went back to the 8.4% growth rate. Now before I recalculate this, you just want to take a look at what the share valuation is. So right now it's $107.50. And now let's hit return. And you can see when that growth rate jumps, the share value jumps with it. I'll undo that for now. So there's a number of cells in blue here. Uh, maybe you want to try a similar type of thing for international business or domestic DVD. Maybe you think that's going to uh, shrink at an accelerating pace and you want to put those assumptions in. Um, you could also go down to the discounted cash flow and say, okay, well, what, what's going to happen if volatility spikes? So right now we have the VIX at 19.2%, which is last quarter's average. What if it goes to 24%? What's going to happen in the share valuation? You can watch it down here. It goes from $108 to $79. So if there's a huge spike in volatility and it was sustained over a, th a three-month period, it's going to have a serious impact on Netflix shares. So we'll undo that. So if you'd like to download our model, 
please visit our website, gutenbergresearch.com. You can click on the model, uh, model store tab, and from there there's a number of companies, and you can scroll down to find the Netflix model. Click on that thumbnail, and by buying the, paying, uh, clicking on this button, Buy Now, you can download it and try some uh, different assumptions for yourself. Thanks for watching.